Well, hey everybody, a happy Friday to you. Hope you're having a good week and are looking forward to an exciting weekend. Well, today's shout out is going to Midlife Mama. Right, go and check her channel out and see what she and Dan are up to. Uh, always, always a good chuckle and, uh, and you'll, en you'll enjoy checking that channel out. So go check out Midlife Mama. All right. Let's move on to our story time. This time, this week, it's something a little creepy. All right, it's called The Curse of the Charles Haskell. So it's not a person, it's a ship. All right. Between 1830 and 1892, nearly 600 ships and more than 3,000 lives were lost in the treacherous and gale-swept waters of the Grand Banks. The Grand Banks are found off Newfoundland, Canada. The victims were fishermen seeking cod in the icy shoaling grounds, and most of them drowned when their ships rammed one another as they jostled in the fierce competition for fish or were wrecked on the shoals. It was hard, nerve-wracking work, and the men who risked their lives each time they put to sea were alert to every kind of omen, good or bad, real or imagined. In 1869, the Charles Haskell, a graceful schooner built and outfitted for cod fishing, was undergoing final inspection when a workman slipped on a companionway and broke his neck. There could not have been a worse omen than a death and the captain who was to take the Charles Haskell to sea for her maiden voyage refused to sail her. Then a Captain Curtis of Gloucester, Massachusetts accepted the position. During her first winter at sea, a notably harsh one, the Haskell and a fleet of some hundred other vessels were fishing off George's Bank when a hurricane struck. In the confusion, the Haskell rammed the Andrew Johnson, both ships were badly damaged, but the Haskell managed to limp back to port. The Andrew Johnson, however, was lost with all hands. If the Haskell's escape seemed to belie her early unlucky reputation, the fishermen did not believe it. The ship had not been too lucky. Sorry, the ship had been too lucky. She should have gone down with the Andrew Johnson, and it was the devil's work that she hadn't. Eventually the spring came, and with it better weather and excellent catches. Once more the Haskell was at sea, fishing off the banks. On her sixth day out, the two men on midnight watch were suddenly terrified. Men in oilskins, streaming water from the sea, were silently climbing over the rails, their eyes staring hollow. The watch called the captain, and the captain and crew saw the phantoms take up positions on the fishermen's benches and go through the motions of baiting and sinking invisible lines. Then, their task done, in single file, the twenty-six dead men climbed back over the rail and returned to the depths of the sea. Captain Curtis immediately turned the Haskell toward home, but another night passed before it before she reached shore. Again at midnight, dead men climbed from the sea onto her deck and played out their ghastly charade. But this time, as dawn came, the Haskell approached Gloucester Harbor. They climbed overboard and formed a grim, mute procession, walking across the sea toward Salem. That was the last voyage of the Charles Haskell, for thereafter not a man would crew her, and she eventually fell into decay and ruin at her mooring. And that's uh, according to the report from Haunted New England, a devilish view of the Yankee past. So there you have it. Kind of creepy, huh? How about another short one, just for fun? This one is called Steer to the Norwest. In 1828, a British ship out of Liverpool, England, was heading due west toward Nova Scotia in the icy waters of the North Atlantic. The ship had been at sea for many weeks when one day the first mate, Robert Bruce, 
found a strange man writing on a blackboard in the captain's cabin. Bruce was astonished to discover someone he did not recognize on board, and mystified went to report the event to the captain. The captain was incredulous. How could there be anyone on the ship whom neither he nor the mate had seen before? Nonetheless, he followed Bruce to the captain's cabin and looked at the blackboard. Plain to see, see were the words, Steer to the Norwest. The stranger, however, had disappeared. The captain asked everyone on the ship to write the same words on a slate, but nobody's handwriting matched that on the blackboard. The captain was now altogether at a loss to explain the apparition and its message, but he ordered the ship's course changed to the northwest. Some hours later, the ship's outlook sighted another vessel stuck fast in the ice. All her passengers were taken on board, and among them, Bruce recognized the man he had seen in the cabin. The captain then asked the gentleman to write down the words, steer to the northwest. His handwriting matched that of the blackboard in the captain's cabin. According to the captain of the icebound vessel, the passenger concerned had fallen asleep at an hour of about the same time that his double was seen. When the man awoke, he had announced with complete certainty that they would all be saved. And that comes from footfalls on the boundary of another world. So there you go. There's two little stories today, both a bit weird and, and odd. But uh, one with a happy ending and the other, well, not so much. <laughs> all righty. It's time for the groaner of the week. And this week's uh, little joke is courtesy of Hannah Humanitas, uh, better known as Hans, but uh, go check out Hannah Humanitas, and I'll put a link to, to Hans's channel down below in the description box as well. So Midlife Mama and Hannah Humanitas are our shout outs this week. And now for the groaner. Well, Han, Hans was inspired by the story I told last week about the graveyard, because he thought I was gonna tell a different story. So he sent me an email telling me his graveyard groaner. So here it is. A gentleman with a very large hump on his back was taking a shortcut through a cemetery late one night when all of a sudden a ghost appeared in front of him. And the ghost said, oh, what's that you have on your back? And the man terrified said, it's, it's, it's a hump. And as soon as he said it, the ghost said, Give it to me! And the hump disappeared from the man's back and reappeared on the back of the ghost. And then the ghost vanished. And the man hurried out of the graveyard and couldn't believe that his luck, instead of being killed or, or terrified to death, he'd been cured of his hump that he'd had for years. Well, a few days later, he ran into a friend and the pub, and they're talking, and the friend says, What happened? Your hump's gone. You're... You know, you, you look great. What happened? So the fellow with the, used to have the hump tells his friend the story of what happened in the cemetery. Well, his friend was crippled in one leg. He'd been in an accident years before, and his leg had gotten mangled, and he walked with a terrible limp, almost sort of dragged that leg a little bit. And he thought, wow, this is great. I can get healed. So late that night, he wanders into the cemetery, and all of a sudden, <laughs> The ghost comes up in front of him, and the man sort of startled for a second, and the ghost says, what's that on your back? And the man with the bad leg says, nothing. And the ghost says, here, have a hump. <laughs> Thanks, Hans. Well, all grown along with you. Hope you enjoyed today's uh, video, a couple of little st stories of the uh, paranormal, and uh, Hans's joke about the ghost with the hump, <laughs> and our two shout-outs, Midlife Mama and Hannah Humanitas. Until Tuesday, when we have some fun in the kitchen, have a fantastic weekend. Take care, stay safe, and God bless. Mm -hmm.